Hi, my name's Bren, and welcome to Strange. I just said Strange. What? Strange? Hi, my name's Bren, and welcome to Project Strange. In this series, we're learning about the fundamentals of structural engineering and how it affects our day-to-day -day lives. Today, we're learning about risk and confidence. But first, let's talk about history. In the real world, everything comes with a risk. This could be taking out a loan to buy your dream house, taking that flight to Europe that only cost you 30 bucks, or drinking that milk in the fridge that says it's expired, but your mom says that's just a suggested date. They say high risk comes with high reward, but can the same be said about structural engineering? Contrary to popular belief, structural engineers don't always deal with quantities that are perfectly known. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. There are loads of uncertainties in material properties, dimensions, methods of analysis, construction quality, and even loads that make them not so easily quantifiable. Absolute safety, for example, zero probability of failure, cannot be practically achieved. But how safe is safe enough? We cannot say with absolute certainty whether some structure is stable. We can only calculate certain probabilities. One of the founding fathers of these probabilities is German astronomer Carl Friedrich Gauss, who came up with the idea for normal distribution in 1809 when measuring errors in astronomy. The idea of normal distribution has to do with the probability of random variables and how far they deviate from the average, also known as the mean. This helps mathematicians understand where an uncertainty will most likely fall into. For example, using a normal distribution graph, the average height of a woman is about 5'4", but about 68% of women are between 5'2 and 5'6". Yes! So if you were walking on the street, there is a 68% chance that every woman you see is between 5'2 and 5'6". As heights get more extreme, like someone super short or super tall, the likelihood decreases. Like how only 5% of women are either below 4'9 or above 5'9". Which technically means there is a chance there's a woman out there the size of Bigfoot. Hi. Hi! This is like how engineers can only assume risks within a reasonable range as some extreme factors can't always be accounted for. Like if you were to put 40 elephants on the roof of your house. Anyways, for both you and I to learn more, let's check out my interview with our friend Ryan. The interview. Ryan, what's risk and confidence? So an example of, oh, I looked right there. <laughs> Risk and confidence is a pretty common subject when it comes to uh, probability and statistics. And I think I'll just start with confidence. An example of me being confident would be saying, I could say with 100% confidence that Enoch is to my right. Huh? Confidence is generally explained in terms of a set interval. And uh, the best way to explain it would be to use a Gaussian curve. Gaussian curve. Now that we have our Gaussian curve. Gaussian curve. Or better described as a normal distribution, we can set up some intervals between it to talk a little bit about confidence. For example, let's say we add an arbitrary data set and I wanted to say that I'm 90% confident that a value will land between these two areas, then I can set these posts and say this is my confidence range. Now that we've set up these confidence intervals, I think it's a good idea to start talking about what this curve even means. And pretty much it's just a way to distribute data and indicate where an average is and how spread some of these data points can be from that average. How do you use risk and confidence in our everyday lives? To talk more about this curve, we need a data set. So I think we should start asking the office some questions. Let's see. Enoch! Yeah, what's up? How long does it take you to make a grilled cheese sandwich? Quickly! Five minutes? Five. How long does it take to make a grilled cheese sandwich? Probably ten. Ten minutes. How long? Two. How long? One. How long? Over there! 15. There's gotta be more! There's gotta be more! Peter, how long does it take to make a grilled cheese sandwich? Six minutes and 20 seconds. Six minutes, 20 seconds. Is there anyone else in here? So now we have a data set, we can reliably look at how much time it takes to make a grilled cheese. The average could be six minutes, but it also depends on how big your data set is. So I ran around and asked like seven people, but if I asked 7,000 people, then it would have a much clearer idea of what the average actually is. Six minutes, let's say is the average. At this end, it could be 25 minutes. This person has no hands. This end is less than one minute, so they have obviously spawned it in. And this confidence range, let's say, is for a person, and they're 90% confident that they can make a grilled cheese between two minutes and seven minutes. How do you use risk and confidence in structural engineering? 
So basically, in structural engineering, we can imagine an example where we need to do an assessment on a steel structure. And let's say the structure is made of four columns and, and four beams and it sits, sits on the ground somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And we want to do an assessment of the steel and we want to see if it's corroded or if it's perfectly fine. So what we would do is we would just look at the steel. But typically, steel is covered by like the facade, by brick, by cladding, by a lot of different things. And we need to selectively investigate different locations such that, you know, we're not opening the entire structure, but we're getting a representative sample similar to the grilled cheese thing so that we can understand the entire system as a whole and create a prediction as to the entire condition. So let's say 100% are good, then I would be 100%. But if it's the other way around, if they're all bad, then I'd be 100% confident that they're all bad. 50-50. I'd need to probably investigate a little bit more. Another important point uh, about confidence is also risk. Let's say we're designing for a, a structure. We need to make sure that the structure can withstand certain loads. And typically in design codes, we apply load factors, which account for the risk involved in construction. So that could be poor construction quality, that can be weather, that can be material deficiencies. There's all these different things that can go wrong with the material, but we apply these factors so that we can avoid the risk involved with not knowing them. So that uncertainty and that risk is mitigated by the factor and gives engineers confidence to design properly. Confidence and risk. So basically, in everyday conversation, the word risk is often used to mean the likelihood or probability of something, usually negative, happening. In structural engineering, risk is often used in a more restrictive sense to express both the probability, likelihood, of an occurrence, such as the failure of the structure, and the degree of consequences arising from it. For example, lives lost. Buildings, bridges, plants, dams are usually built and maintained in accordance with codes and standards that aim to achieve a certain target reliability. For example, probability of not failing. In engineering, normal or Gaussian distribution is used to model the distribution of measurement errors, the strength of materials, and other engineering variables. The empirical rule, also known as the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, is used to estimate the percentage of data that falls within a certain number of standard deviations from the mean in a normal distribution. The empirical rule states that approximately 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation of the mean, approximately 95% of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean, and approximately 99.7% of the data falls within three standard deviations of the mean. Woo! That wraps up this episode of Project Strange. A special thank you to Ryan for teaching us about risk and confidence, and a special thank you to you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to learn more about structural engineering with me, and don't forget to enjoy the process. Another way to explain confidence would to be, uh, let me, let me say that again. Um. Yeah.